Well, hi there, and welcome to Take Two with Jerry and Debbie and you. And you are being asked today to sit this one out as far as phone calls because we are off today. It's a, it's a pre-recorded broadcast, and we are so excited about the guest and the topic that we are going to have with us here on the program today. I'm Jerry Usher along with Debbie Giorgiani and the show team, and we're going to be speaking today with Father Matthew Schneider. He's an autistic priest with the Legionaries of Christ, uh, originally from Calgary, Canada, but since joining the Legion, he has done ministry across North America. He's written for many publications, including EWTN Zone, National Catholic Register, America, Crux, Alatea, and Pauline Books and Media. And you can find Father Matthew on social media at Father Matthew LC, at Autistic Priest. He currently lives in Northern Virginia, writing a doctoral thesis in moral theology. And uh, Father Debbie and I welcome you to the program. Nice to be with you. Nice to be Father, with you, too. Yeah. Yes, Father, we want to ask you this question because this comes up a lot with our Take Two family um, members of the listeners of the show. They, they've they asked us to address autism and, and other uh, situations that really impact our youth and our adults. And I find I found it very interesting, Father, you were diagnosed after you were ordained, correct? Yes, that was that was that was what happened with my case. Okay, tell us how that happened. So, I think there's two factors to think about when we talk about this. First of all, the diagnostic criteria has changed dramatically. Like, if I look at the diagnostic criteria in the 80s and early 90s when I would have been in elementary school, I didn't fit the diagnostic criteria for autism back then. Uh, the, the diagnostic criteria were much stricter, and they required you to have a, a an intellectual delay back then, which, you know, as you mentioned, I'm doing a doctoral thesis, probably don't have an intellectual delay if that's what, what my current ministry is. Uh, and so for myself, what happened was I was ordained in 2013, and right after my ordination, I was assigned to be chaplain to a school, and I'd worked in youth ministry as a religious brother for four years or so. So I had some experience with that, but more in youth ministry, it was more like teens, and this was K-12 through 12 school. And especially with the younger kids, I wasn't picking up, I guess, a lot of their social cues and things like that. And the, after a year of a three-year assignment, the, the principal's like, you know what, I'm not sure if you're the best fit for this. Maybe you have Asperger's, maybe, or something like that. And, and so I was moved to a different assignment uh, to be kind of w- working part-time on studies and part-time kind of behind the scenes for the community, kind of like a chancery for a Dawson priest, and uh, doing my li- licentiate in sacred theology at the same time. But at that same time, I also thought out talking to a psychologist and going through a series of tests and and then really discovered, like, got that diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. Now, I mentioned Asperger's there. Right before I got my diagnosis, what used to be called Asperger's and autism were kind of combined in the new in the new psychology manual. They call it the DSM. The, and so they have different editions. And they try and look at how best to describe different conditions. And sometimes it's like, sometimes they'll split one or sometimes they'll join two together to try and describe it better. And right now we, we just, back then in about 2014, 15, they combined autism and Asperger's. So if you've heard of people with Asperger's it right now, that would be autism spectrum disorder. Anyway. So I, at that point I was kind of, I was kind of feeling down. I was kind of feeling out because I was like, now this is like I'm going to be a disaster as a priest. Like my thinking, like, I went through all this formation, and then like, how can I be a priest if this is my my psychological diagnosis? But then, as I went through this, I went through all of the different factors. I started looking, and I said, "Oh, look, you know that really does describe me reading on it, and it really helped me to understand a lot of things in my life." And at the same time, it made me think, "Okay, well, maybe there's a ministry more, a ministry way." To, to use this, you know, both in the sense of like, hey, maybe I can help autistic people to better better serve the church, and also look at other ministries. I'm like, I was talking to my my provincial, like a bishop for a, for a religious priest, and I said, hey, you know what? Maybe if I go and study, finish my licentiate, do a doctorate, and become a professor, I think I would do very well in that. You see me teach a few things. I'm perfectly fine with those type of things. A lot of the other things my community tends to do 
would would be difficult for me because of because of the issues I have with autism. So that's kind of like how I came to this point. And around that same time, I realized, oh, look, there's nothing on autism in prayer. There's very little on autism in religion. R- religion um, beyond just like parents of autistic kids praying about their own kids, which is valuable, but it's not the same as on a, as prayer for the autistic person, him or herself. Right. Our guest is uh, Father Matthew Schneider. He is a priest of the Legionaries of Christ on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Not taking your calls today as a pre-recorded broadcast, but one that I think you really, really want to listen to. Father Matthew is the author of the book, God Loves the Autistic Mind, a prayer guide for those on the spectrum and those who love us from Pauline Books and Media, and also the website, FatherMatthewLC.com. And Father, talk just briefly a little bit more about how your your perspective changed. You were already talking about that, how you had those down moments, thinking, wondering, you know, am I still going to be able to minister as a priest? What was maybe, you might have even thought, what was the use of becoming a priest? And yet God always has a plan. God always uses the gifts that he does give each one of us. And talk about how that, maybe you had an epiphany like that, that really sort of uh, rebirthed your vocation in, in a sense, if, if anything like that happened. You mentioned an epiphany. And one of the things that happened as I was reading up on autism right after I got diagnosed, because I read like a whole bookshelf of books on the topic once I was diagnosed. Uh, I was talking to one of the other priests in the community, and, and he would say, you know what, like, all of us have our strengths and weaknesses, and now that you know this and you know, like, this is going to be your cross, but it's also where you have your strengths, you should, you should, be, you should be happy about it. You should be, you know, <laughs> you, you, you should move forward with this. And I, and I really thought about that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times people struggle a lot, of try, a lot trying to find out what, what their cross is when they're looking to grow spiritually. And at the same time, I realized, at the same time talking to the same priest I was, and talking to others, I realized certain things that I had kind of assumed about everybody weren't really true. Like, I started talking about how much people subconsciously read the other person's emotions and how much you do it consciously. Like, most people, if you're talking to them face-to-face, kind of subconsciously grasp, okay, this is what the other person's thinking, more or less. This is what they're feeling. Whereas I'd been using conscious processes through that my whole life and just assumed everybody else was doing it consciously too. And then I realized, oh, almost nobody else is, but I guess that's an autism thing. Father, hold it. Hold it right there. We're going to hit the pause button. When we come back, we'll let you pick up where you left off because this is a fascinating discussion and we want to promote your book, Father. Thank you for being with us on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Thanks for being with us on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie on EWTN Radio. Ace McKay, our producer, Jeff Burson, is on social media normally. It's a a taped broadcast today. And our call screener, Matt Gabensky, is off today as well. And we're talking with Father Matthew Schneider of the Legionaries of Christ. He is an autistic priest, and he has written a book that we're going to be talking about during our conversation here. And so much more about his fantastic ministry. And we'll get back to Father in a minute. Just want to tell you about the National Catholic Register and email. EWTN's National Catholic Register is America's most trusted Catholic news source with a comprehensive view of the world from a distinctly Catholic perspective. Give a subscription or subscribe for yourself and save up to 42%. Visit ncregister.com today and you can receive daily, weekly, or alert emails from the register. Just visit ewtn.com and click on subscribe. Father, um, go ahead and we, we, sorry for the pause there, but if you wanted to just kind of rewind about five or 10 seconds and pick up that thought that you had going, um, we'd love to hear more about what you were just saying. Yeah, so I was talking about how like we who are autistic tend to experience the world a little bit differently than what what would be called the neurotypical or like you know the vast majority of the population. We're about autistics are about two percent of the population. There's some other conditions that are also considered neurotypical, like ADHD and and things like that. But you know you still have a vast majority who are who who don't who are not like that. And so for myself at least, I realized a lot of the kind of what's called theory of mind or grasping what the other person is thinking or feeling in general, I was doing it way more consciously than other people because you, a lot, most people have kind of a filter between your, your immediate sense experience and your conscious thought about like, oh, this is what this person is thinking, this is what they're feeling. You know, like when we see something, when we see something it's like, you know, I look at my wall and it's like there's a, there's a, there's a you know, a photon from my light that's bouncing off my wall 
hitting the back of my eye and telling me that this wall is like, you know, off white. And from that from that kind of off white photon to me saying this is the wall of my room and that's that's a poster I have up or that's an icon of the Sacred Heart I have up on the wall. There's filters in our in our in our brains that, that kind of do that. Whereas for autistic people, those filters tend to be different or or missing at times. And so a lot of times, like how we experience the world, is 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 different in, in ways, and we don't realize that how different it is all the time because that's how we've always experienced the world since we were little kids. Fascinating. Uh, Father Matthew Schneider is with us here on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie, and he is a, a Legionary of Christ priest, uh, openly autistic Catholic priest. Uh, he was diagnosed with autism after his ordination to the priesthood in 2013. His book, we encourage you to look for it. It is God Loves the Autistic Mind, a prayer guide for those on the spectrum and those who love us from Pauline Books and Media. And you can also really follow the outstanding work that he's doing on a daily basis at his website, FatherMatthewLC.com. Um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, about autism, Father. Some people might think of just you know one kind of autism, but I, I think you've mentioned already. There's there's kind of is, there, you call it this spectrum. Can you explain a little bit about what the autism spectrum means? So the official diagnosis right now is autism spectrum disorder, and our immediate thought of a spectrum might be like, okay, this person is mild, this person's serious, stuff like that. But what it is is that it's a spectrum of different realities because we as autistics, we tend to have different sense experiences. And a, a, lot, of, a lot of autistic people are what's called hypersensitive. So like no, lights that are normal for us, most people are like way too bright for them. I'm, I'm a little bit in that direction, but not in a way that's super serious. Like, like I'll be wearing my sunglasses outside when almost nobody else is, but... Inside, I'm 99% of the time fine unless, like, I'm right in front of the window, but most people, most people don't like that anyway. Uh, and, so, and so there's that, or there's some who are hyposensitive where they want you to give them a bear hug, and they want to give you a bear hug, like, constantly because they don't feel it unless it's, like, really strong, a really strong sense experience. And at the same time, you have, you have different issues of, of social issues or or different issues of, of things like that. And so autism is really, you have to have like, you have to have at least a certain number in, in three different areas to get it, to have, to get a diagnosis. But once in those areas, there's no kind of like one feature that every single autistic person has. It's more like you have at least three or five here, at least two or four here, and at least three or five over here kind of thing. I don't remember the exact numbers, but something in that range. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even those those four or five, some of them are unusual sense experiences. So they could be the hypersensitive or the hyposensitive would both qualify as the same one there. So so that's kind of how you have a whole variety of of different differences. Right. And and it's a difference in brain structure for the most part. Right. Well, Father, let's talk about that, the brain structure, because as you were speaking, um, and, I, and I thanked you uh, on the first segment of, of this uh, pre-recorded broadcast for being on the show, because I just know this is going to be super popular with our Take Two family, because this is, is touching so many um, folks and in their families and in their work. 